Hello and welcome to this video in the lockdown learning series where we're going to be taking a look at the presets in Master Rig and also how to compare your different mix downs that you do. So this is an important part of your process being, I, I guess I'd say scientific about it, but having some kind of feedback about it and, and, and taking a look at what you're doing and whether or not what you're doing is working is important because it's, it's easy, particularly say if you watch videos um, a number of videos you see on the internet they're basically like yeah just do this this and this and then it's done in it and I'm not sure that that works it certainly doesn't work for me I think you need to look at what you've done and be you know assess it and see whether it's working and and, and learn from that so I, that's why I'm saying a scientific process although I know people go crazy about that's not actually how science works but anyway here we are in wave lab we've got the the track uh, the previous track that you've heard a million times by now, but I'm going to go with it anyway. Uh, and we've got Master Rig. So this is the default setup that you'll get uh, in WaveLab. But if if you haven't got this for whatever reason, so let's say you had no plugins, or if you want to remove a plugin, you just two finger tap or right click here, and then you can pick remove plugin. But here I'm going to pick Master Rig. It's under recently used here, but it's also under Steinberg Master Rig. So it's it's characterized as being mastering so here we've got it it's got in its default setup so what we're going to do is apply a few of the presets to here we're also going to see the, just the render button in action as well and then compare them in cubase but you you may not be using presets you can certainly do this it'd be a good idea to do this and just you know have a listen to how that affects your music but also to learn how to do this this process with your own settings and you can just name mix downs accordingly so the presets are in this area here. So there's a lot of gray in this interface and it's easy to get lost. So here we go. It's under this, this box here. You click here and then we've got factory presets. So we're going to go through a few of these. So the first one I'm going to start out with is this one, um, the MDA EDM preset. So you're going to click there. And as you can see, it's got quite extreme EQ settings. So we can see, you know, this has definitely got some character to it. The compressor is being applied only to things above 100 or so hertz and then is fairly large amount of compression on there. And uh, the limiter is just acting in a brick wall mode. So if you're not sure, a brick wall limiter basically is nothing can go above that level. And this is set to minus 0.1 dB. So no matter what we throw at this, we shouldn't get anything going over. So this, this is probably going to be fairly extreme. So let's apply this. So we can we can hear it if we if we press play. Let's go to a louder part of the track. So we'll listen to it with it on. And then we can bypass it here. So you can hear it's having a real, you know, that's having a big effect on the sound. You can see the meters here are going up to point minus 0.11. You can reset these by clicking. So here it will say. It's seen minus 103 dB. It's basically seen no audio. And as soon as we start playing it, so I'm going to bypass that. We see the peaks in the original track are around there, but you can see it's, it's slowly going up. It's not constantly at that level. It's just occasionally when things line up. But if we turn this back on and play it straight away, so we know we're going to see a much more sausagey looking waveform once we mix this down so we're gonna we're gonna use this as one of our baselines so we can apply this and we can apply this using this render button here so if we click render you get effectively a save as dialog box to it to a degree so you've got some choices you can do it in place and that would affect the original file which is what i don't want i i never do that i always want to do it on a new file so i've got the original one to compare it to so I tend to pick name file and all I'm going to do for this is I'm going to put MDA EDM on the end because that's the preset I've used. So I tend to be fairly orderly about this kind of thing because otherwise you never know where I am with this kind of stuff. It's easy to get lost. So I, I tend to end up with names which, which show what's been applied to things and then I know where I am with them. It's got a couple of other options. Obviously you can pick the, the WAV format or mp3 etc we're going to stick with wav default we're just going to keep it to what it is i'm not going to change the location although you could do 
We've got some other options here, including you could bypass the master section so you could have that without those effects, etc. But the typical one is open resulting audio file. So this will get reopened in WaveLab so we can have a look at it and also bypass the master section on the resulting audio file because otherwise you'd then be re, in quotes, mastering it again. So you'd be applying that same thing again. So the, the defaults are pretty sensible here. So I'm just going to click start. It goes through it as fast as it can. So you can see it's doing seven minutes of audio in, in seven seconds or so. And then we will see the resulting file. So I'm going to zoom out on that so you see it. And as you can see, that looks much more like a commercial master track. So look at the difference between the original where we've got some dynamics and peaks in there and then there, flat and sausagey. Okay. We're going to compare these further in Cubase because I find it much easier to compare them at exact times by doing that. So we're going to do this on a few more. So let's look at some of the other ones. So I'm going to try and pick ones which are for electronic music. So let's go for let's go for progressive. So here you can see we've got some EQ, much more subtle than the previous one. Compressor working on two bands this time, saturator, imager working just on things above about what, 800 hertz or so. Yeah, and then a limiter at the end. And again, we've got a brick wall limiter this time at minus 0.3 dB but with the harmonic section turned up to a degree, not massively so. So let's have a listen to that. So we can see it's going to 0.3 as we'd expect given the limiter settings. So we get the idea with that. And again, we're just gonna render that. So I'm gonna uh, just remind myself what the preset was called, LM Progressive. There we go. So. Render, again, LM, progressive, and again, takes it a little longer. So you can see it takes a little longer because it's got more processing to do in this case. And once it's done, again, we can zoom out. We see uh, a similar effect, but you can see there's a little bit more dynamic left in this. If we compare between this one and the EDM preset, you can see this one's being pushed a lot harder. Let's do a couple more. I'm just gonna spin through these very quickly. Save your time. So notice how on that one, the end section on the GL pop one is it's it's really flat, isn't it? So that's that's quite interesting. And then finally, let's just go back to one more preset. So Alan Morgan Electronic Dance. Again, similar settings, although notice here that the imager is coming after the limiter in this case. And again, take a look at that. You can see each one of these is different. So they, they compress and otherwise affect the music in different ways. So to compare these, you can obviously compare these in WaveLab by playing in this. So while you can compare these in WaveLab, what I'm actually gonna do is open these up in Cubase. So that's what's gonna be in the next video. Say, so I hope you found this quick tour of the presets and how to apply them useful, and I'll see you again soon.